Hey there guys and gals, it's me Romero for RMN and today I'm going to give you guys a quick analysis video about how the brand new TMNT movie could have been much better and I'm going to be doing a four step countdown of how this movie in certain aspects could have made not only critics and regular moviegoers happy but actual TMNT fans who made up a majority of the people I'm sure who went to go watch this movie for themselves. So I already did a movie review for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you can watch that in the link in the description box below but I do forewarn in this video there are spoilers so excuse me spoiler alert anyways without further ado let's get started with the four step countdown coming in at number four the origin story could have been changed now for anybody who saw the origin story for the turtles and splinter in the new TMNT movie probably had this reaction I don't want change I don't want change everything has to yeah, everybody had that reaction, I'm pretty sure, not just TMNT fans, I'm pretty sure everybody thought that storyline was pretty stupid and forced and hammered and didn't flow naturally. But thankfully, thanks to my creative mind and my love for the Turtles, I've decided, thanks with the help of hype voice acting and his amazing Splinter impression, to give you guys a kind of different twist on this origin story they try to do. Now I understood what Jonathan Lisbonman and the creative team for this movie were trying to do. They were trying to give April a more family kind of relationship with the Turtles and Splinter. I get that. But it didn't work because it felt hammered, it felt forced, and it didn't flow naturally. So, like I said, let's hear this new origin story that I personally made up that has some aspects of the old origin we know and love with some of the new aspects of this new origin story in the film. So, let's listen. Many years ago, in the great country of Japan, I would watch my master, Hamato Yoshi, train in the ancient heart of ninjutsu from my cage. I would watch him train daily, honing his skills, as I too tried to copy his techniques. Sadly though, his rival, Oroko Saki, also known as the Shredder, would murder my master in front of my eyes. Oroko Saki would try to take me as a reward for his actions, but it was not before I left my mark upon his face. Many years later, the Shredder gave me the Sax Industries to be tested and tortured with the mutagen. This would also be the same time I met you, April, and you showed me the same kindness, compassion, and love that I received from my master, Yoshi. This would also be the same occasion I met the four baby turtles who would grow up to be my sons. Sadly though, your father found out what Eric Sachs and the Shredder's true plans were for the mutagen, so he burnt down the lab, sacrificing his very life to stop them. During that fire, I was terrified until you came and saved us before we perished in the blaze. April, you gave us a second chance at life when others would have kept us in cages. That night, I vowed to train my sons in the same art of ninjutsu as my master Yoshi did. So when they grew up, they would defend not only themselves, but also the city from any evil. And now here we are, April, and you have found your way to us. And there you have it, a perfectly good origin story that keeps aspects of the old origin that we all know and love from the comics and TV shows and the original 1990s movie, while still keeping some of the aspects from the new film and also you're not, not ruining it and destroying it and demolishing it for everybody. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy that, so let's continue on with the countdown. Number 3. Get rid of Johnny Knoxville. If there's one thing that took me out of the experience of enjoying this film was hearing Knoxville's voice as Leonardo. Now, this was one of the news tidbits that came out for this movie that I just dreaded. Uh, I forget how my reaction went.
seems about right. All around, I didn't like this choice, and even when I heard his voice in the trailers and TV spots, I didn't see it. Now, the original motion capture actor, Pete Pulusk, he has a very difficult last name, okay, people? I'm Hispanic. I can't get away with pronouncing this. Anyways, hearing interviews with Pete, I actually thought he could have been a great Leonardo. I mean, just listen to this little tidbit from an interview promoting the film. Leo leads, you know, and I think uh, a lot of Leo's story is about the weight and the burden of, of responsibility of being the eldest of four boys and stepping out into an, a newfound world. We meet April and this is this is the new frontier, interacting with humans on this level. The jig is up, you know, we were seen. And someone has to be the decision maker. That to me sounds like a great Leonardo. I mean, if there's one thing many people know is that there's a deep contrast between Raph and Leo that many people like seeing, and they have distinguished voices. Raph, of course, is the gruff, rough kind of deep voice that we all know him for because that fits his character. And to contrast with that, you have Leo whose voice is a bit more calmer, a bit more soothing, you know? It's supposed to sound like he's a laid back leader in contrast with Raph. But here is just Johnny Knoxville speaking as Johnny Knoxville. I mean, in an interview, he clearly even states he didn't even try to distinguish the character. He just did his regular hillbilly voice. I'm not even kidding. Listen to this. Uh, no, no, not a bit. Not a bit. I just came in and uh, they wanted me to use my voice. I didn't have to use a voice. So I just, you know, played a big hillbilly playing Leonardo. Now, many of us can fan and rage out about the fact that he didn't really try or that he's not even a fan. But from a business standpoint, I could understand where he's coming from. He just wanted to do this to get a check and, you know, be on his way, put food on the table, what have you. I get that. But still, personally, Pete would have been a better choice to go with for the voice of Leonardo. But this is a Michael Pay production, so we can't expect everybody to be good. <laughs> Megan Fox. Anyways, let's continue with the countdown. Coming in at number two, less April O'Neil, more Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, when the TV spots and trailers and promos and posters came out for this movie in giant bold letters, it clearly says Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It doesn't say the April O'Neil movie and in small little letters, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No, it clearly is supposed to be about the turtles if they're constantly promoting them. But no, what do we get instead in this movie? April O'Neil. And she never goes away. If there's one thing that they did in the 1990s movie right is that April O'Neil was not the focus of the movie. Of course, she was a part of the story and helped the plot, you know, go forward, but she wasn't the main focus. She was just a part of the story in order to help things go along. And honestly, they could have done that with this movie. Condensed her role not too much to where she's not a part of the movie, but to a point where she's just a, you know, just a spoke on the wheel helping the story go along, and she is still pretty relevant. Also, can, the movie runs in at about 90 minutes, so there's a lot of room to add other stuff. I mean, add a good 15 minutes more of footage with the turtles, you could probably give them more character development, give them individual moments in the film where they show their personalities and, you know, really get to shine individually, and also more scenes of them interacting with one another. I mean, in this movie, there's a scene where Raph and Leo get into a small spat, and Mikey just says that oh it's been a whole 30 minutes before you guys had this argument oh really when did they have the first argument they that this is the first time i'm seeing this i mean seriously if there's that's one thing from the original that everybody loved was the dynamic relationship between rap and leo so if you really condense megan fox's role in this movie not to the point where she's not a part of the film but where she's like i said a spoke on the wheel that helps turn the movie's plot and keep it going forward you can have more of the turtles interacting with each other give them more development, give them more individual screen time, and also show that dynamic relationship between Raph and Leo that we all know and love. But no, what do we get instead to give them some sort of development as a team? This. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's great, they can beatbox and stuff, that really shows that they're hip and cool and they're their brothers and they connect with each other. No, that's just... that, that, that was just freaking... no. I'm sorry. 
Anyways, moving on with the countdown, the number one thing that could have made this movie a lot better is... Casey freaking Jones. Now, when the first official draft of this movie leaked online during the production of the film, people went bonkers that the story was terrible. But there was one thing that people actually did like, that Casey Jones was in the first draft of the script. Now, like I said, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie runs in at about 90 minutes, so I personally feel this movie could have been at least two hours if you added some more stuff and also rewrit a few parts. So, this is one thing I could have rewritten into the story. Now, in the original draft of the script, Casey Jones was just a mall security guard still trying to make it in the major leagues with his girlfriend April Neal on the other side trying to make it as a reporter and them living together in a small apartment in New York. I think this could have actually worked in the movie. And for any of those wondering, my pick is Casey Jones, Taylor Kitsch. I'm sorry, I know he's a, you know, bad luck at the box office and, you know, box office poison and whatnot, but let's be honest, he does look like he could play Casey Jones. Anyways, I honestly think if you add another few more minutes, maybe 10 or 15 more minutes, make this movie a good two hours and five minutes or so, you could add, could have added Casey Jones into this movie. You know, show, you know, show him and, you know, April having a tough time struggling not only individually but together in a relationship but then as the movie progresses show them working together trying to stop the foot clan with the turtles you know and all this stuff and then finally the movie ends with them you know their relationship being stronger and and you know more unified by the end of the film and I know this kind of story sounds cliche, the whole, oh, their relationship, will they, you know, get stronger by the end of the film? Will it crumble underneath all this chaotic action? You know, I know that sounds a bit cliche, and I know it sounds even Transformers-esque. But I gotta say, this would perhaps be the only way it would work in this reboot, and it would allow for Casey Jones to be a part of this franchise and this series, and it would also reduce the role of a certain <coughs> Will Arnett to perhaps just a cameo. I mean, what was even his purpose of being in this movie? Uh, I, I, I literally see still no purpose. I mean, if we add Casey Jones, at least he can only just be a brief cameo or to play Vern, you know, just as a little nod to the series. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video of my four things that could have made the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie much better. Leave down comments below. Let me know what you guys would have made or changed for this movie to be a lot better for you. And if you're a Team NT fan, I especially want to hear your thoughts. Anyways, as always, I'm Romero for RMN, and I've got your back, so you're on track. See you guys next time. Yeah! I love being a turtle!